Welcome once again back to the lab. It is your old Professor Pilk, and last we left off, we were talking about the Gliscor build for this raid. Now, Gliscor is a great mod for this, and he really is, I don't want to say a no-brainer because it's a weird build. Like, obviously, it's a ground-flying unit with a bug Terra, but remember, that is going to make him a pure bug mod defensively once we get into the fight. Plus, it's going to add stab to our bug move. Now, moveset-wise... We did Lunge, we did Swords Dance, we did Taunt. Now, I swapped out that last one for Crunch. The only reason being is because Crunch can do damage while also potentially lowering the defensive stat. EV-wise, I've got everything in Defense and Attack. And that's going to kind of be like the sweet spot here. And you will notice that I did give it a Mint. That gives us Attack up and Special Defense down. So, very handy, that. Um... Abilities really don't change anything. Just know that we've got the shell bell on them. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right. So as we enter the battle here, remember, he is a physical attacker, and this unit will increase his defense. So if we don't do something to drop his defense, we are going to be fighting against the clock. The downside is our def our main attack that lowers defense. It kind of is... Um, it, it's not guaranteed. So we do need to use it as much as possible to try to lower that defense as much as we can. Let's go ahead and start off with a taunt. That's going to stop him from using curse for the next three or four turns. Okay, he's going to open up a seed bomb, which is okay. Seed bomb's not going to hurt at all. Uh, we do have Star Raptor there, so we didn't take as much damage because he is uh, intimidated. That's the really nice part about this. You can really use your partner mod to intimidate to drop a lot of that, uh, drop a lot of that physical attack. There are sometimes adverse effects to that, and I'll talk about that later. But for this run, it's fine. For this run, we don't. It's just dropping his, his attack essentially. It's not, it will help us out. Okay. Another seed burn. Not really worried about it. We're not really taking a huge amount of damage here. There's another crunch. Can we get? Okay, his defense started falling. Great, excellent. Love to see that. Now, he is on the cusp of using his uh, curse, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to taunt one more time before he puts the barrier up. We've got to be quick about it. You will notice that we have paralysis now. I'm not going to use that quite yet. I'm going to I'm going to save that for a special moment. Okay, so you can't use Curse again. Let's go ahead and do another Crunch. There we go. With everything as low as it is, I'm going to see if I can reset the timer on Taunt. Nope, nope. I don't even know if that would work, to be honest, but it is what it is. All right. So we have a few turns where we can't use Curse. I'm going to go use... I'm going to go and start... To, uh, let's see. I'm going to do another Crunch. He should nullify stat changes. I basically want to Crunch until he uh, does his stat changes again. We won't produce damage, but we're definitely going to be kind of doing our thing here. Here go the stat changes. So now... Now we are in a state where we can comfortably go ahead and Swords Dance. So we get that started. There we go. Get good set headbutt. That's fine. He can't really hurt us right now. Like, that's the best part. With Intimidate still in play, and with our defenses, there's nothing he can do to do damage to us at this point. Now, that's what I'm a little afraid of, is him starting to buff. So let's do one more sword stance. That'll max us out. Let's see where he stands back. So it might be time to start lunch. So let's take a look here. There's another buff on his part. So let's take a look at his stats here. So his attack is almost increased. His defense is all the way up. We need to lower that defense. Let's do another crunch and see if we can bend down. Because with his defense all the way up, he's, he's not going to be able to... He's not going to be able to curse again. So basically curse is locked again. 
but we're also not going to be able to produce a lot of damage. As you can see there, we're taking damage now. I don't want to do anything rash yet. Uh, if we get taken out, that's fine. I won't lose my paralysis or anything, so we're going to kind of continue on here a little bit further. Okay, we avoided the attack. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and cheer heal. I think at this point, it's just a, it, we've got to go in and start doing our uh, DPS. So, here we go. Here comes that headbutt. Ouch. So, let's go ahead and terrestrialize and do a lunch. Now, unfortunately, this does mean we are now more susceptible to some of these attacks. And once his attack is too low, he'll actually start relying on uh, body press to be able to avoid that. But... be nice if his defense had dropped more. It just didn't work out. Yeah, see, we really got to lower that defense. But with this attack going down, that's going to give us an opportunity to go work on the defense a little bit more. Okay. It's not very effective. Great. We got some healing out. Let's go ahead and crunch again and see if we can drop that defense. But essentially, this is what you're going to do. You're going to use Crunch to lower that defense. Hopefully, you get lucky with the uh, the defense lowering. The downside is you can't really do much of anything here until his barrier goes down. You've got to lower that defense to get down. So if you have a couple runs like this where things aren't going great, just rerun it. You'll be fine. Um, admittedly, it's not the best build, but it is a build. And it's a fun build. I, I really enjoy running this as a challenge, as a personal challenge. So, there's a lot of this back and forth. We're now, you know, Ludge will lower his attack, Crunch could lower his defense, and you just basically do that until you could finally beat the clock. As it stands right now, we're not really probably gonna beat the clock with this run, but we just had really bad RNG on the Crunch. But, that's the build essentially. It ain't perfect, but, uh, it, it wasn't quite what I had expected it to be, I'll be real. But, you know, it does kind of rely on RNG a bit. Let's talk about a couple of the builds that aren't so rng late. So a lot of you guys asked about Hisui and Zoark, and I actually really love the way this mod works. I love the, the look of this mod. Everything about this mod is just awesome. Now, uh, of course we're going to be using Shell Bell here. Of course we're using the Ghost Terra. And as you can see, EVs, I really only put into special attack. I didn't really have anything to put into defense. I really wish I did. This is not a mod that is very defensive. So we do need to be a bit cautious here. But moveset-wise, we're going to be using Shadow Ball once again. That's going to lower special defense so we can do more damage. Uh, Bitter Malice will lower the target's attack stat. And is a guaranteed to lower the target's attack stat, which is really nice. Nasty Plot will increase our attack. And of course, Taunt once again. Uh... I did use a mint here, so we are down to special attack, and special def or special attack is up, special defense is down. We don't really need special defense, so it's not that big of a deal. And ability-wise, you don't get a lot of choices. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the real trick here, and as you guys can start to kind of surmise, there is kind of like, I, I say a pattern to this. Obviously, taunt is like really, really, really handy. Ooh, we don't have intimidate this time, so we're gonna be a little careful. Not crazy, just a little bit. Um, just remember, Intimidate knocks him down a peg. So that just is, that just is what it is. Let's go ahead and uh, open this up with a taunt. Stop him from doing his self-buffs. go. Very handy, that. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and open up with some Bitter Malice. Bitter Malice is guaranteed to drop this attack. Ooh, we have Paralysis on that table. There we go. So his attack is just going to kind of go down at this point. It is what it is. All 
All right. I'm not terribly worried about it. He can only do so much damage to me, so let's go ahead and do a second Bitter Malice. We get three Bitter Malices out, and we need to re-up that taunt. It's very tempting to try to do a fourth Bitter Malice or a Shadow Ball or something before you taunt. Don't. Just, just get him out there. Because he'll use Curse, he'll, wait, he'll just waste a bunch of time, and then by that point, you might as well have done it anyway. Okay. Third Bitter Malice. There we go. Now, the main thing is here, I just want you to pay attention because not necessarily the moves that I'm doing, but I want you to understand why we're doing things the way we're doing them. Uh, he's buffing his, his physical defense and his physical attack. His physical attack is like his biggest threat. His physical defense is kind of a red herring unless you're using a physical unit. So let's go ahead and switch over to Shadow Ball. Basically until he's going to have a barrier in a minute. Um, in fact, I'm shocked it hasn't gone up all better. But basically what we're doing is we're just preventing him from utilizing that buff as much as we can. Now, here in about two turns, he'll start using it again. It is what it is. But right now, that gives us a couple turns that we can just do some, uh, some nasty plotting where we know that his attack stat is pretty far down there. We know we don't have to worry about him producing excess damage or anything. Our health is pretty high. We'll be okay. So we'll go ahead and get off the second nasty plot. We'll probably get off a third, and then he'll start doing curse. But at that point, we can start working on his attack stat again. And remember, he is going to nullify um, his, his status again. So, you know, we don't want to go crazy. Okay. Nasty plot number three. Now, at this point, we're kind of where we're at. Like, he's... He's not going to change our stats. He'll change his stats several times more. But he's not going to uh, modify our stats or nullify our stats again. So we're good for now. There's that curse. Okay. So that's when we need to start being careful. So the trick to this is, though, let me show you something here. He's going to buff that until his defense is all the way up. He will not go further than that. So we can go ahead and Trastalize and do better Malice. That'll drop his attack stat a little bit more. We can get to keep his attack stat here at, like, neutral level. Or pretty close to, at least. Um, but his defense will go all the way up. And then he'll just, he just won't use Curse at that point. He'll, he'll be stuck. For the rest of the match, he'll be stuck. Even after he nullifies attack stats, he'll be stuck. And notice we're already doing crazy damage to him. Uh, now, that doesn't mean we can move into Shadow Ball here in a minute, and we can really just go to town. There we go. See, he's, he's nullified now. Not that it did much, but, you know, it's, it kind of is what it is. Do you remember, we are not defensively minded at all. So I'm going to go ahead and do another Bitter Malice, try to get that down. But as you can see, you know, unlike any of the other runs, we're just, we're, he's not a threat to us. We're just ruining him. And that's what's really, like, nice about running this with a special attacker. He doesn't do anything for his special defense. It's all physical defense. So we can just kind of go to town on his uh, special defense and wipe him out. Bam. Now, I could start taunting him again, but there's no point. This The tide has turned in his battle, right? He is now buffed to the point at which he's ever going to buff. And his barrier's gone. So he loses his ability to really affect us in any way. So we'll go ahead and start just shadowballing him to death. And I do mean to death, because he's going down. Um, I really did like the Gengar build, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think the Hisuian Zorak build is just my absolute favorite so far. So Houndoom here is an interesting situation. Um, this is one I didn't really see coming, but when I realized I had this in my bin, I had to give this a try. This is one that I actually got through a Wonder Trade, and I never really thought I'd use him in this way, but this is actually really interesting. So, being a Dark Fire type, the only move that's really in... in 
uh, in his repertoire that can hurt me is the fighting move. Now, the fighting move hurts a lot. It actually does an insane amount of damage. But we can kind of mitigate that. Now, obviously, we're using our Shell Bell here to get some healing out. And uh, I went ahead and went with HP and Defense in my build. That's right. I went EVs and HP and Defense because we really don't need a uh, special attack in this one. We need to make sure that we survive those hits. So that makes this a really interesting situation. Now, move-wise, it's going to kind of be what you expect, right? Uh, Shadow Ball for a DPS. Taunt, of course, to mitigate some of that damage. Uh, nasty Plot to obviously buff ourselves up. And Inferno. Now, let me explain how this works. Inferno is only a 50% chance to hit, but it's guaranteed to burn. Now, we could do Will-O-Wisp, but I kind of went with Inferno here just because it still does damage on top of it. So it actually works towards our Terra Orbs. So we can actually bump up how fast we can Terrastalize and, and we can get a burn off, which will cut his physical damage in half. So it's a really, really interesting build. It's not the easiest one by a long shot, but it has been a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and jump in here. All right, so as we hop into the event here, there's a couple things you need to know. Let's see if we have anybody with... In okay, we do have Intimidate on the board. Um, I prefer not to have Intimidate, but it is what it is. Yeah. Tauros, Arcanine, and Star Raptor, and a couple others, will actually like mess this up a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and open up with a Taunt this time. Normally, when you have nobody on the board with Intimidate, I open up with Inferno. But we're going to go ahead and open up with Taunt and stop him from doing his curse. Because since his attack is already down, he is going to uh, he's gonna try to curse instead. So body press it is, but even that's not going to be a big deal here in a minute. Because we're going to go ahead and open up with Inferno on our second turn. Right, and I'm glad it hit. It's a 50-50 shot. You really do want it to hit on the first attempt. Um, so we got really lucky there. Now his attack is basically cut in half twice over. That's great news. So now he won't be able to do much and he can't curse. So what we can do is we can go ahead and do another Shadow Ball. Or say do a Shadow Ball. Bam. We can do one more Shadow Ball and that will essentially set us up for when he puts up his barrier. Now, he may be able to curse on this turn. I think it's next turn he starts to curse. But his barrier is going to go up here real soon. So essentially what we're going to do... Okay, we're going to eat this body press. And on the next turn, we will go ahead and taunt. Now, we will probably have to eat the damage here. And that is what it is. So what? We've taken L's before. It's not that big of a deal. He is taunted, though, which means for the next few turns, he's not going to be able to do anything. So, or he's not going to be able to, to, to do his curse. So that's great news for us. And it really is kind of a sub-zero situation for us anyway. We just kind of want to bring a stop to that curse. So this is really kind of like a perfect situation for us. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and Terrastalize and do my Nasty Plot. Now the reason I'm going to Terrastalize is because he's probably got Body Press queued up. Once I Terrastalize, he can't use that Body Press anymore. Now, with my Terrastalization, then I can start doing Shadow Ball. I can basically do uh, Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, and kind of wear him down a bit. We may have to do a Cheer Heal here, but it kind of is what it is. Yeah, see, he tried to do body press and it didn't work. So we can go ahead and do another nasty plot. He will hit us with, um, I'm going to guess Zen Headbutt. Yeah, there we go. And it did practically nothing. Now, I can also do an Inferno here and cut his attack down a little bit more. So long as he's got that burn on him, we're great. I probably should have done that instead of Shadow Ball, but we're just in a great position now. We're just a fantastic position. Now, you could run this without Intimidate, uh, but the basic thing with Intimidate is you need to do Inferno right out of the gate. Do Shadow Ball twice, 
Trash Lolly with Shadow Ball, and then get a Taunt off before all is said and done. So let's go ahead and do one more Nasty Plot, and then we'll kind of take it. So now he's in a situation where he just he can't do anything to us. It's great. So if you can run this with, with uh, Intimidate, it's a great thing to do. Just find a, you know, like, Tauros or... Okay, so now we can start doing Curse again. So we're in a little bit of a pickle, but it, it ain't that big. As long as we're doing hits like that, we'll be okay. We'll be fine. So he's trying to buff himself here, and that's it's not great news, but it's not the worst thing ever. So let's see what his uh, so his attack is only up one. So somebody else is also trying to reduce his attack as well. Now if we get a couple more ticks down on the special defense, we'll be in a great shape. He can hit us, he can hurt us, but it's not going to be world ending. He also removed the burn here in a few minutes, but that's not really that big of a deal. Let's do another Shadow Ball. Great. We get a critical hit even better. And notice the special defense keeps going down. The more special defense goes down, the better it is for us. So, okay, so he just removed his negative effects, so we are going to go ahead and have to do... Ooh, Zen Headbutt's not going to feel good here. Yeah. So we're going to have to go ahead and do an Inferno again. Great! Ah! Inferno going off every time is, is really up and sound. You might not be that lucky, that's fine. Um... Just use your cheer heals as, as you need to. Like, make sure you're always over 25% when you cheer heal. You'll be okay. All right. Another Shadow Ball. We'll break his barrier, and then we can hit him with a uh, taunt. Stop him from doing any more of his buffs, and we'll be good to go. Pretty straightforward. Now, once again, this is with Intimidate. Uh, if you don't have anybody on your repertoire that has Intimidate, there are ways around this go but there we go excellent excellent yeah so essentially it's it's a it's a race against time if you don't have anybody on your team that has intimidate or you can just re you know do it and go over and over again until you have somebody that has intimidate but it, as i said before you can do inferno two shadow balls terrestrialize with shadow ball which will eventually negate the one attack he's trying to do and then hit him with a taunt like I'm going to do here, and that'll stop his second. His basically his turn four and five will be nullified at that point because both things he's trying to do are, are negated by your move. Sneaky, sneaky, I know. But it's great. Now, if you can get all five of those moves off before he puts up his barrier, you'll be in cool shape too. You'll basically be about where we are now. And there you guys go. I won't lie, it was a little bit of a race to the end of the clock, probably because I was yakking a whole bunch. But if you keep up with those Shadow Balls, you'll be good. So there you guys go. Easy peasy. Defeat Meganium. I didn't think Houndoom would do it, but... It's great. It's fantastic.